first one of the year, Tim. Thank you for coming oh, back. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Dude, I, I, I really appreciate it. I, I, I said last year that you'll be the first one on, and we made it happen. Oh, man. Well, I'm yeah. happy to be here, man. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you coming back. It, 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 is, it hasn't been that long since I've seen you, though, at, the, at Zebulon. So, I mean. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're super close now, so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you made it out into the patio, though. I couldn't get you to the patio. Made it out into the patio. <laughs> Legendary Zebulon patio. Legendary. Um, so, I had Dan on uh mm-hmm. a couple a couple days ago he said that i mean i i saw that beck was at the 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 concert i saw that mm-hmm. but he also said that brad pitt was allegedly there allegedly yeah <laughs> did you did you see him <laughs> i didn't see him but you know strange thing though they were saying that it was brad pitt's birthday and and i just have a hard time to believe that brad pitt had nothing better to do than go see the band on his birthday i mean Brad Pitt's got things, you know. I have a hard time to believe that that's not the correct way to celebrate a birthday, Tim. I think going out, was that the Troubadour? Was that the Troubadour, yeah, yeah. That's the place to go. Have you, I, and I asked Dan this, have you seen anybody out in the, in the audience that was a celebrity? Like, no fucking way, such and such is here. Uh, yeah. Uh, we were told, we played a show in San Juan, Puerto Rico, and we were told that Michael Imperioli, uh, you know, Christopher from The Sopranos, that he would be there. Um, I don't really get that struck by celebrities. I'll be totally honest. Like I, I, I don't know. It's not. It's not like the most interesting thing for me that somebody's famous. But there's some people whose work, like I, I admire and I, I loved Christopher Maltesanti on the on the Sopranos. So Michael Imperioli being there, that was kind of cool. Um, but he, he he was speaking with us after the show, and he's he's a big music fan. Um, and he was, you know, he kept describing the show as transcendent. He was just like, it reminded me of seeing, you know, Dinosaur Jr. opening for My Bloody Valentine. It just took me places. It was transcendent. It was just, um, it was kind of, it was kind of cool. It was, it was cute, you know, um, very cute, very cute. It's very cute. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. The, the celebrity thing though, it's, it's so weird, man. Um, like living in a place like LA. You'll you'll see you'll see these you see these folks walking about in the world and it just you know really kind of like demystifies the whole thing you know like like I don't know like you'll see somebody like Elijah Wood and he's just standing in line to get coffee and it's like yeah dude he's a human being and like in the first year that I lived in LA uh, buddy and buddy and I were just kind of chasing the party and we end up at a certain celebrity's house in Hollywood Hills because. He, uh, my buddy was friends with his daughter and i was just like sitting there like oh dude we're, I don't, i'm not gonna mention this, this right, right, right right but um but it's like oh we're going to his house this is so insane we get there and it's just you know it's a very lovely family home and it just seems you know obviously a very different income bracket than most of us are used to but just a very lovely family home it felt like a place where a family lived i was like oh this is this guy's a human being there's like these photos of them on the wall like the classic like olin mill style family photos but it's just this dude and his family and they're wearing like matching polos and a white background and they're all just, it's like, dude, it's just, he's just a human being. And it really, I don't know. It's just people, but you have to yell at Elijah Wood. Cause I feel like he would be a person who's on his phone, not paying attention to the line going up. It's like, Hey man, you gotta, you gotta move it along here. Like I gotta get coffee too. You know what I'm saying? Well, he took a long time to order coffee. It took a really long time, but you know, of course he had a child of course. that he was uh, consulting with about, I think hot chocolate. You can't give him an out. You can't give him an out, dude. No, you know, he's no. See, here's the thing people give celebrities just too much credit, but also people can be too harsh on them. So, I'm, you know, he's a human being. Give him a pass because he's living in this world and it's a hard world to live in, you know? I don't like well, how, you, how you're trying to be a middleman on this. You, you either, you're either against them or for them, but you, you're, you're Switzerland right now. You're neutral. I'm, I'm agnostic on the whole thing. You know, they're just trying to get through the day. And they have a harder time probably getting through the day when they're going out and doing normal stuff because they get recognized. And, you know, you know, I don't have that problem. You don't have that problem. We can go to the recycling center and no one wants us to sign a uh, can. Know, their can, yeah, whatever it is that they, you know. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, if, it, if it weren't for music, what do you, what do you think 
you you'd you'd be more into right now? What would you be doing for like fun or trying to make as a living? Um, I think I'd be doing music regardless. I kind of, I've had various moments in my life where I've contemplated particular careers, um, but it was always just with the goal of having free time to do music. Um, you know, I graduated college at one point in time. I thought like, I'll be a teacher because I'll have three months off during the summer and I could tour then. You know, at one point in time, I wanted to be a, uh, a hydroelectric power plant operator for the state of California. And got my license for that. Um, got to the second round of apprenticeship interviews. And my whole reason for doing it was just like, I would work three days a week at that job. I'd make a good living and then I have four days to work on music. And I could even maybe stack things up in such a way to like give me time to tour um i don't know i during the pandemic i was really worried about the future of, of music um i took like a coding boot camp so i was just like maybe it's a time for a career change but with the coding boot camp i was like i do it freelance and then like you know i could um potentially organize tours around that on this freelance schedule like i always i don't know music's always just kind of been the thing that I followed and then I don't know yeah I can't imagine I mean, what I do without it like I, I it's I don't know I, I will probably be doing this for my whole life and just figuring out a way to make it happen whether it's something I make a living at or if it's just something that I just do because I don't want know. to yeah because you need to yeah yeah I guess that's important you know it's nice to be outside plus um I'm at my sister's house right now I have two niece. Oh no, sorry. I have one niece, two nephews, and they're they're playing Mario Kart. Everything's a little chaotic inside, so it's a little quieter out here. That's good. That's. I'm, I'm sorry. Quite, I'm I'm eating a very late breakfast while we're doing this. I apologize for the chewing noise. That is that is fine. It's 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 ambiance. Okay. <laughs> we need to fill this time up with something, right. Tim. And I'm glad that you're bringing something to the table. I appreciate it. Okay. Ah, uh, conversational filler of my chews. <laughs> Um, when do you when, when do you consider lunchtime? I I say noon, but what, what do you what do you say? Well, I eat breakfast pretty late, so this is my breakfast right now. This is, it's noon. I'll probably eat again in like a couple hours. But... So so you're looking at lunch at like what three? Probably three, yeah. Okay, and then like I got at up like uh, six. Probably six seven. Okay. Uh, I got up pretty early. Went to the skate park, and. Fell pretty hard and had a couple of cups of coffee. And now I'm here. I'm eating a bagel and it's noon. Talking to you in the backyard. Man, your life yeah. is exciting, dude. Oh, yeah. If, if you're doing this <laughs> podcast after all that, woo! Oh, man. I mean, you know, let me tell you. I, I don't know how old you are, Jacob. How old are you? 21. 21. 21. All right. Well, I'm, I'm 39. So this is uh, 18 years from now. You could be living this exciting life of, uh, you know, just. Eating I'm, breakfast at noon and uh, talking to people in the backyard. I don't know. I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully. We'll see how it goes, though. I, th I, yeah, I think yeah. I'm on the right track. You're doing great. You're doing great. I appreciate it. You've been on the Zebulon patio. That's a, that's a sign in itself. That's, 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 the, that's the real thing that you have to overcome to, to be successful in anything. That's, you got you to be out there be out talking. There. It, was, it was nice, though, because there was um, Misha Lindis from Sad Girl who had been on the mm -hmm. podcast was there. I said, Oh, I'll go chat with him. He's been on the podcast. And that was really nice to see him. Mm -hmm. And of course, Justin was there and it was, it was nice seeing, oh, yeah. him, seeing him and saying hello to him because he's been on. Um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah. So I'm, I'm just kind of starting to create a super group of people who have been on the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta, yeah. That's the idea. So. Yeah. You've got like a, a mingle list when you're on the Zebulon patio. Yeah. I gotta go here. I gotta go here. Yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. It's a, I like it's, that. Yeah, I I got my I got my rounds I got to take. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I uh, I don't have my rounds at Zebulon. Uh, it's just the, the vortex of social anxiety for me, and I try to hide in the, the downstairs basement. And, there's, yeah. oh, there's there's a basement there. Oh, it's a little basement, yeah. In L.A., which is so odd. Yeah, yeah. Very yeah. very unique, but very um, unique, but it's it's helpful. Yeah. yeah. To, to to hide away yeah, yeah. <laughs> what uh what, what makes music exciting for you tim like what 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 is it that really draws you in that draws me in um 
I don't know. I was thinking about, I was thinking about this. Um, I think a lot of people have different ways of connecting with music. Like one of my best friends growing up, um, I would be driving around listening to music in his car and he would just pick out little things um, that would just blow his mind. And I was more a person that connected with an overall feeling. Like I, I was, I think less analytical and more looking at like a, like a big picture of music and um, just what grabbed me and moved me. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's, I don't know. I think that's a great goes. answer. I think, I think I, that I, I liked it a lot. I, <laughs> I was with you. I felt like I was in that car with you, listening to it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, I think probably what moves me about music or connects, gives you some sort of connection isn't really a profound thing. I think it's just a feeling mm -hmm. that you get from certain things. Um, yeah. I, I feel like I don't have the most, uh, sophisticated way of enjoying music um but yeah i mean whatever whatever moves me it's a, a kind of an indescribable thing like have you ever it, heard of this it, band this band gate gate no it's a uh, related to this band called the dead sea um they have this record called the dew line and there's a song called i have not and it's really just like a two chord progression i think it's like eight or nine minutes long but it's just this mess. Um, but it's really beautiful at the same time. There's just something about it that, like, it just pulls me in this in this way that, like, I don't know, something that might be a little more technical and interesting, you know, might move somebody else. But for me, it's just like the overall feeling and presentation of this thing just really grabbed me. And I don't know. And do you, and do not, you focus? I'm not on, a very complex dude. I mean, no, you are though. I, I I already know that you are. You, you've been on here before. We got into well, the deep intellectual conversation after we stopped recording. <laughs> Kafka was involved. It was a whole thing. It was a whole oh, yeah, yeah. very deep introspective conversation. Do you feel like? Yeah, you, we talked about the metamorphosis for hours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Turned into a bug. That's 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 the entirety of it. Yeah, that's. There's a summary. What right is there. that? What does that? Re what does that represent? What is the bug? Represents cliff notes. That's what it is. That's what I'm oh. giving. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, do you do you feel like you're you you try to create that in your own music though? Like uh, just a a feeling of of uh, or an energy through through a song? I think so. Yeah. I mean, I guess more so with worms and OCs because I you know I, OCs is much more a ship that's uh, captained by John. But uh, Flatworms is a little more of a democratic process. I think for me, my, when I'm referencing something that we've been working on, I guess if I feel it, that's how I know that oh, I think this is good. If I feel it, if I could like imagine listening to it at home and playing air bass along with it, like for me, that's a sign. I'm like, oh, this is this is a good song. This is worth putting out or performing live, you know? Um, right. Yeah, it's... I don't know. There's got to be like some kind of emotional connection with it. Mm -hmm. I, I, and it doesn't have to necessarily, I mean, it doesn't have to be like a emotional connection, like a sappy, like emo way or something, but just something that moves you, you know? Right. Um, some sort of emotion is conveyed that you think is real and palpable. And, yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you feel like the music that you make is a reflection of the music that you like in terms of sound? It's like, I like um, listening to this and, and I'm making this music as well. I'm a part of this sound. I think so. I mean, a lot of times I don't ever really make my own music. Um, I kind of just like working with people. Um, I think in most bands that I've been involved in, unless it's something that's like purely a singer songwriter thing. Um, I think, uh, you know, the various parts are indicative of people's personalities and tastes and like, um, you know, I think, um, I don't know, any band that I'm involved, that I've been involved in, I think like it would be, it would sound different where I, where I, you know, not in the band and same thing with every member of that band, like, you know, um, 
it should be a melting I mean, pot for, of, of interests yeah yeah and like for better for together. worse you know it's like so it might be like you know they some people might prefer a band with like a different lineup or something like um i've played in two different bands that had um different different lineups before i joined like ocs and sick ops and like um i mean i personally liked the sick ops lineup before i joined better and i think uh I like the stuff we play with those seeds, but I, I, you know, also like loved the, uh, like the lineup that's like considered more of the classic lineup too. But, <laughs> it's so funny because Dan, I, I asked Dan this, do you consider PD Dammit, Bridget, Bridget uh, Dawson and Mike Schoen that is that the classic lineup in your eyes? I think so. I mean, it's just going to kind of always be the reference point that I think people will use for that band, you know, like, um, I think that was, that lineup was the lineup that kind of brought them to greater attention. Um, and it was really like, that was kind of, you know, seeing that band in San Francisco, that was the lineup that really kind of made them become kind of a force, if you will. Like um, before Mike played, there was this drummer in the band called Jigme Bear, who's a good drummer. We actually had a, a group for a little bit, um, myself, him and his girlfriend um Amelia but when Jigme left and Mike joined it really just like it transformed that band and you could tell that, that there was just something special between the four of them um and yeah it kind of just became the band that a lot of people really really enjoyed and gravitated towards um yeah I don't know yeah I mean I would consider it the classic lineup because it kind of that was the you know, we're, they're always going to be playing songs from that lineup, you know, regardless right. of who's in the band. I mean, even if it's just, even if it's just like John and the drum machine, he'll probably still be playing like, you know, songs from that lineup just because, I don't know, it's, it's what everybody references. I mean, I can't imagine a group like Guided by Voices not playing songs from the, you know, the 93 to 97 classic lineup, you know? Right. It's just, that's the reference point that's going to be there until the end of time. Yeah. Um, when you when you look out in, into the audience when you when you're playing live and people are really liking what you what you're doing in there and they're dancing in there and they're singing along or what, whatever mm -hmm. they're doing there that you could really tell that they're enjoying it. What does that do for you? Does that does that change uh, your mindset at all? Or it's kind of interesting. Like I feel that music. This might sound kind of corny, but I feel like music has this cyclical energy, and when you're a young person music just like means so much to you i mean like it's kind of like particularly underground music because it's kind of an escape to a, a a different kind of culture in the world like you might have not known existed like you know there's just that one day where somebody discovers black flag and it's like a door that opens to a whole new universe or the velvet underground or something like that um and so with kids like that discovery means so much and so like you have this insane energy and hopefully you take that energy and then you start playing in bands too. And you're able to like reciprocate that energy back to other kids as you get older. And I remember we played the show in Melbourne one time and I remember seeing a kid, it was an all ages show and this kid must've been like 15 or 16, but he looked just like me at my age. And he was just having like the time of his life. And I just like had this weird moment of just kind of like seeing him and in a weird way, just seeing myself and seeing the energy and the excitement that he was having. And I was kind of like, oh my God, like right now I'm playing in a band and it's making this kid extremely happy. And when I was his age, like I was also watching a band that was doing that for me. And hopefully this kid also forms a band and does that and another kid gets that excited and just keeps this cycle going like i think that's really important because if you know once that stops music dies but like it's important though i mean it's this cyclical energy that i don't know that, that need, needs to be there it needs to fill that yeah totally it, it or else there's a void yeah that's that's awesome man that's that's awesome that, that you had that moment of clarity it's like this is what happened to me and i'm imparting it hopefully on to this kid or whoever, whoever else is at this show or on this tour yeah 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 um I mean, it's just i don't know man it's 
it's important like sometimes like you know i'm almost 40 and sometimes you forget just how much music really really means to people and i i you know i i don't get out to shows that much because i think when you're in a band sometimes like the idea of just being at home and having quiet time just seems more appealing than being out and i'm not really a particularly social person so i and i'm a particularly anxious person socially so it just it starts to get hard but like um you forget though sometimes like through all your own personal bullshit how much like music like really means to people and it's just it's really important to be aware of that because music is a very very special thing and you know and like that guy michael imperioli was telling us like it's tr it's transcendent like it can take you outside of yourself and um make you feel things you haven't felt before make you see the world in a new way um it's unique and i think i mean there are lots of different art forms that speak to people in various ways i mean i think film could do that for people books art but uh, for me it was music that made me just you know feel something new yeah and it, it opened up a lot of just perspective and doors and what, and what have you it's it's online yeah right? totally man i mean what do you for, for you has it done that i mean is it like i know you're you're a big fan you're doing a podcast and everything like it's gotta it's gotta resonate with you in, in some capacity if you're willing to do this you know I mean, definitely yeah i mean yeah, yeah. Yeah, there, there's, yeah, there's, there's definitely a, a feeling that I, I get, and it's especially, I mean, music is obviously a huge, um, just gateway into like gaining perspective on, on, on any art. It's like, I really feel something from this, or I really enjoy it. Like you'll, you'll put a song, I mean, you've had those songs that you put on like whatever, 10 times just to play it over and over and over again, just because you oh, like, yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it so much, which is again like like yourself for me it's like that's that's kind of more what i gravitate towards and i and i understand that film and, and photography and, and and everything else that you said as well is um it can also do that for other people but yeah it's really it's, it's really special for me and it's i've been able to connect with um artists themselves and and kind of ask them about what how how this i mean just, just like i'm doing with you right now just like yeah. what their perspective is because it's really interesting from an outside perspective to see how you feel about things but i think you're you're in it though at the same time like i wouldn't say you're, you're outside of it i think you're just you're channeling that energy from music in a different way like i think you can channel it without necessarily being in a band i mean like when i was growing up you know like the big thing with music particularly in punk and hardcore music was just to get involved in some capacity and it didn't necessarily mean being in a band. Like you could reciprocate that energy through other ways, be it putting on shows, doing zines, you know, being a kid that takes photos at shows. Like it's all, it's all connected. And it's just part of like keeping this thing going forever. And I think, you know, with, with people doing a podcast and stuff like that, it's almost just like a new form of doing zines and things like that. Like it's just keeping the energy, keeping this whole thing going and just people being involved. Yeah, it relies on me. I'm I'm the only person that's holding this up right now, so it's kind of I see that's, it's, that's it's important. Heavy. You are you are you are an anchor for this whole thing. Well, I so. I, I, I appreciate your, your kind words. I mean, it really does mean a lot to me. Truly, no, it's it's very true, though, man. Like I think that, like, without the energy for music, it'll just keep going. But like, I think it doesn't want to die. Like I think it's a body in motion that wants to stay in motion, and so I think kids are doing whatever they can in some capacity to keep it going i think there's some you know there's some ways of doing it that i think are kind of like a means to a dead end i don't think like you know documenting music on instagram in my mind is the way to like keep it going but maybe it is and maybe like you know maybe i i don't see that but i don't know it's it's gonna keep it's got to keep going and i think people are doing that in the various in various avenues that they walk down and you're, you're part of that so oh uh, well, I, I i appreciate it and uh yeah. I, I i really I, I didn't do something in music i don't know what i talk about like i don't know more weird weird, weird weird jobs i've had over the years or more that's weird ones, that one yeah well i mean like give me give me a little bit of highlights what was what was the weirdest one you had oh let's see um well i was a pa for that show the bachelor um for a number of years when I first moved to LA, I was playing in Sick Alps. Um, I'm playing in another group called Wet Illustrated. 
and um yeah i was just I, just a pa for that that show um very i mean it was a strange job i mean i i was fairly new to la fairly new to just working in like the entertainment industry i didn't really know the beast and how it worked um but i think i did an okay job working with the, the bachelor folks because they kept bringing me back for other seasons to pa um it got to the point where they would ask me to pa on their hiring their hiring process so um Basically, what would happen is that they were this is for the Chalet. So they'd sequester these gentlemen out at a Holiday Inn right by LA International Airport. And my job was to escort these gentlemen, you know, from their hotel rooms to a panel of interviews with, um, or not a panel of interviews, an interview with a panel of producers, escort them to a psychological evaluation, and I think, it, and then a physical examination. Um, I mean, literally, these guys were like sequestered there for about a full week. Like they couldn't leave the room. They couldn't talk to anybody. Um, and so, you know, I think sometimes they were really lonely for just anyone to talk to. You know, we, I'd knock on the door and they'd be like, dude, what's up? <laughs> hey, how you doing? <laughs> but like one particular guy that really stood out to me, he had just crazy energy, but like he was also really sweet. I knock on the door and he, op he opens it up just like I hadn't seen anybody like all day. I was like, what's up, dude? How you doing? Like. He was about my height and I'm not a very tall guy, about five foot eight. And this guy about my height, but his like arms were as big as like both of my thighs put together. And he just had this, just this insane energy. He's like, what's up, dude? I'm not going to say his name because I think like, I don't know, I signed some NDA stuff for all this nonsense, but we're making small talk in the elevator. And I was like, Hey, where, so where are you from, man? He's like, I'm from Chicago, bro. I was like, ah, man, been in Chicago a number of times. I like it. Beautiful town. I couldn't deal with that snow, though, man. I was like, what? You don't like snow? I was like, nah, man, man, I'm a California kid. I was like born and raised in a snowless environment. I'm not used to it. And he was like, I love it, bro. I love it. I ride my bike in that shit all the time. And I was like, ah, oh, you ride your bike in that, dude? Like, really? That's, that's pretty gnarly. And he was like, yeah, I ride my bike 360 days a year. I was like. 360 days a year is like what do you do with the other five and he says this thing that will always stick with me he goes what do you mean so he got cast but he didn't know that there's 365 days in a year maybe that's why he got cast maybe that's he got cast yeah maybe, I mean, that, he, maybe that's why though yeah i mean he's maybe he's taking a full business week off for whatever but he just didn't want to disclose it. Yeah, yeah. But he got he got chosen. Um, and then so when the show started filming, I would do this thing at the rose ceremony where I would serve drinks. And I see this gentleman, and he didn't remember my name. I remembered him because you know he rode his bike 360 days a year. You don't um, forget that, yeah. Don't forget that. Um, but he was like, "What's up, bro? I made it." I was like, "Oh, dude, you did, you did." And uh. Yeah, just following home on Instagram for a while. He would have this like really just, you know, how would you how would you describe it? Like just these kind of like corny insta like Instagram like inspirational quotes, like the equivalent of like fitness, live, laugh, love kind of stuff. Just like like never back down, reach for the stars. That 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 kind of shit where he's like posing with a barbell or like doing burpees on a beach or something. It was right. It was awesome. Yeah. I mean, every day, every 360 day there was yeah <laughs> no days off no except days off five. except for those five except for those five that I don't count for <laughs> yeah I mean, that's recovery day that's recovery day when did you leave that job I actually worked that job until I worked it a little bit for the first year I was playing in OCs um yeah so uh, I think it was like 2012 to 2014 yeah man yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's a good chunk of time there. Yeah, it was good. I mean, it wasn't like you're working all year long. I mean, I was like, you know, working a good six to eight weeks while they're doing stuff in LA. You're not working 360 um, days. You're just not, yeah, not 360. Yeah. <laughs> no. Part time. <laughs> Part time. Yeah. Just, just five days. Yeah. What was, what, what were some other job? I mean, that's, that's a pretty memorable job. <laughs> that's a pretty memorable job. Um, <laughs> 
I mean, I PA'd for another show called Tattoo Nightmares. Um, was that on Spike? I believe it was, yeah. Okay. I remember yeah. Spike. Now Paramount Network. So. Oh, uh, yeah. PA'd for them. It actually wasn't really that interesting, except the production supervisor, I think. He was this, he was a gentleman that was like, a, I, I would say he was a pathological liar. The things he told me, were so hard to believe like he told me that he sold chris farley the cocaine that killed him um god what were there other there are some other claims he had it was always just about like like right before some celebrity would die like he was like right there like like oh yeah let me tell you i was with mj and when he (laughs) yeah yeah how the how the fuck were you there God, there was another one. I really, I'm blanking out right now, but there was, he had some ridiculous, this isn't really that interesting story, but. <laughs> I mean, if, if that, I mean, supposedly the guy who sold Chris Farley the cocaine that killed him. I think that's pretty He's, interesting. Yeah. I mean, he swears it was real. Um, was, was, uh, was Tattoo Nightmares, and, and uh, I, I think I'm thinking about the, the right one, is that when the, people would come in and like, oh, and this guy was like so heavy handed and like my blood was was like spilling everywhere and like they would, it would cut to like a drama uh dramatization yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. someone to be on the show being like you know and i got this tattoo of like a tasmanian devil with an erection or something and then there'd be like this dramatic reenactment of like the scene where this guy was on a date and like some woman was like yeah, you'd really turn me on if you got like this tattoo or just stuff like that yeah like, yeah yeah i remember um, that show <laughs> i was actually on an episode of it though they needed so the what happened was this guy was pledging a fraternity and he got the symbol of fraternity on his body before he was actually a member of and they needed a dramatic reenactment of what would happen uh or what happened when the pledge masters saw that this guy had this greek and inst- whatever greek lettering on his body before he was actually a member of fraternity and so they asked just a handful of the pas if we could also just pose in this scene as if we were also trying to pledge these fraternities and so there's a scene of me and like three other PAs and we're just like in our underwear with these guys holding paddles being like pledge rise to your knees. And, you know, and like all this, I don't know. My memory's a little hazy, but that's, a, yeah. I mean, that, that that's your, was it your first debut acting? I think so. I don't think but, anybody saw it. I don't know. If, I, I, don't know I, if I actually aired on TV. But. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to go back. I'm going to, I'm going to find those, those cataloged episodes. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> if if you must, if you must. Yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, good. I mean, you. I mean, you're talking to pathological liars. Uh, you're 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 talking to bachelors. You talked to a lot of people, Tim. It seems like you're you're really you're really going out there. You're really man of the people. I I, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do what I can. When, when man, you- man of the world. Yeah, when you when you find a, a, um, an interest in something, is it does that? Do you find that it's kind of less interesting than music? In time? it's like, yeah, I have another hobby, but I like this as well. I mean, is is there anything that um, t- comes close to that at all? I think it, it just depends. I think like music has always just been the thing, but uh, you know, other things excite me, and it's uh, it's just always just gonna be in different ways, like. I went skateboarding this morning and uh, I don't know, you get, get a totally different feel out of that, but um, and it'll never eclipse what music does, but it also, you know, it's, it's kind of a renewed interest. I um, sort of in the pandemic, I got back into it as I was just like looking for things to do instead of like binge watching Netflix and um, that's your nightmares. So, yeah. Yeah. That's oh yeah. yeah. Um, but no, yeah, there's, there's, I have other interests, but they, uh, music is for better, for worse, always kind of eclipsed those things, but, uh, yeah. But the, I mean, it's, it's there, but it's not, nothing com- uh, compares. Yeah. Nothing compares. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll find something that eclipses all of it. I'm, I don't know. I'm sure if like I had a, a child or something that would just change, change everything. But Usually. Yeah. Yeah, usually, if it doesn't, that's kind of a problem. <laughs> that's, that's a real issue. Um, yeah. Do you do you always perform barefoot? Uh, it just depends on the circumstance. Um, 
I mean, sometimes not. Like, um, I got really sick on this last tour. We played in Edinburgh, and um, I got really horrible food poisoning. So I, I got through with the show, but I didn't even take time to take the shoes off. I just wanted to get through the hotel and go back to lying on my couch and try not to vomit. And then you take wow. your shoes off, lay on the couch, of course. No, I mean, I, had, I, I couldn't really, I couldn't do much. That is rough. That is rough. Yeah, getting it was it was tough too. Because, um, my girlfriend lives in England. We don't we don't get to see each other that much due to the, the pandemic and just the nature of a long distance relationship in general. But it was a night like that she came down and I was like, oh, we're gonna get to spend some time together. Instead, like my time was just like waking her up by throwing up in the bathroom and actually i didn't wake her up it was it's kind of funny um i really felt like oh my god i'm probably waking her up and i was just in the bathroom just vomiting and then like i crawled back into bed and i was just like hey did i wake you up and she's like no but you just did right now and i was like oh okay sorry <laughs> but but i mean at least you're polite about it you're like okay all right let me let me, let me try to just just sneak out of here real <laughs> real polite like yeah i mean i've ever tried to throw up just quietly <laughs> Yeah, no, it's impossible. It's there's just <laughs> it's no way. It's hard. Happening. It's hard. I've tried before, like out of just like not wanting to disturb somebody, and like it just doesn't work. It's just like you're not vomiting effectively. You're just like uh, it's not all coming out. You got yeah, yeah, you, you got to make the noise. The the sound is crucial to get it all out. You gotta yeah. It's sad but true. Yeah. When you when you uh, make a bass part, like you're 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 trying to trying to write something. Is it easier to write something? while you're on your own or while jamming with people uh i usually try to just do it when i'm jamming with people every once in a while i'll have something um a lot of times like sometimes for me my the better ideas that i come up with usually happen just kind of in the moment um and usually i try to do something that like interacts with the drums in a certain way or it's following the rhythmic patterns um you know, isn't like walking on the toes of guitars and keys or whatever. And, you know. Right. And sometimes I'm, like if it's coming out of like, you know, if it's a pretty like simple guitar riff that you have to follow along, like you want to just kind of lock into that and not do anything that distracts from that riff. Um, I don't know. I was I trying mean, to disturb the song as much as I can. Yeah, really, really difficult. It must be, I mean, especially for you, because there's two people playing drums it's like all right it's, it's oh to... yeah with ocs i kind of just like in my monitors i try to just get dance kick and paul's snare um really try to just dig into what dan's doing on the kick pedal but making sure i'm keeping also on time with paul with what he's doing uh, but yeah i mainly follow dan's kick but i'll get paul's snare in my monitor too um uh, I've just started kind of also getting like base DI on a monitor just so I can make sure I'm actually playing somewhat accurately. But the DI is super helpful, man. It's uh, it really, it'll show you all your your flaws and shortcomings. So it's, it's not, uh, not so much on the strengths, I guess. They're just like uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Not so much. It's like uh, just just like a really unflattering camera. Mm -hmm. Um you know, like with like dentist office lights behind above or behind you or whatever. It's, it shows everything, but it'll make you play better. So I got a base DI on the monitors now. Yeah. Um, but going back to the barefoot thing, when did you start doing that? When, when, did, where did that come from? Uh, I think during the sick Alps times. Um, and it was just kind of like a way to, I don't know, man, I get very nervous performing sometimes. And it was kind of a way to just have a moment to just think about where you are and be like, okay, I'm, I'm at the show. I'm feeling the bass in my hand. I'm feeling the floor with my feet. And also it's really great if monitoring isn't nice. Um, so you can actually feel the kick drum on the floor and you can feel it more with your feet than if you were just wearing shoes. So if you're having a hard time locking in just through what you're hearing, sometimes you just, you feel the kick in the floor um, some stages you won't, but a lot of stages you will. Um, and for me, it's just it's just good for locking in. You'll have one foot that's tapping and then one foot that's just steady on the floor, just like feeling that kick. That's awesome. Um, I, I didn't even think about that. 
I have terrible, terrible timing. So I think for me, it's just like whatever I can do to lock in better. Um, that's what I try to do. That's, that's awesome. So, so let me ask you this. Is it like you're keeping your, your shoes on before going on and then you take them off right before going on stage? Yeah, I usually take them off when I get on stage. Um, set, them, set them aside by the amp. And then, yeah, it's sometimes it's harder with flatworms because I, I do some stuff with pedals. Um, it's mainly just hitting some stuff for feedback purposes, but sometimes I'll just get so lost in the music. I forget to turn those things off, but, and certain pedals kind of are, are painful to actually hit with your, your feet. If they've got those little knobs. Yeah. If it's like a boss pedal, it's just like, God, oh, it's, it's, it's very easy. But if it's like one of those little thin knobs, it's, sometimes that's uncomfortable, but what can you do you never see anybody like a shoegaze band doing it doing it with, with, with no that. no so you're you're a pioneer of this it seems like you're 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 innovating i don't know i mean i think there are a lot of people who have been barefoot over the years not doing know. pedal stuff i don't know i've never seen it man ah uh, well maybe behind the scenes i'm sure there's there's some guy out there doing it maybe in the studio but yeah, yeah not live man of- not live man you know some sometimes you'll play at a place and they'll ask you to put your shoes on they'll just and but they're thinking about it more in terms of a uh, venue liability than your own feet they're just like if you want to step on the glass we could be sued and i won't i won't sue you i won't sue you it's if i get if i get tetanus or something that's uh that's all on me that's i'm, I'm covered it's it's cool that's cool it's, it's right. cool yeah yeah Got that, that wonderful Kaiser Permanente insurance. Uh, oh, it's wonderful. Kaiser. <laughs> fan, fan fucking tastic. Oh, yeah. Do you, that. are you nervous before going on stage? Are you, is it, is it like yeah. nerve wracking for you? Yeah, I get pretty nervous. Um, like, um, you know, I've been playing music since, or like playing shows since I was like, 14 or 15, I think 15, but I'm still a nervous, a nervous wreck before every show. Um, yeah, I try to breathe deeply. I got one of these, uh, the Theraguns. You have you seen these, these little like muscle massagers? Oh yeah. 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 I got that. That kind of like tenses, oh, takes out the tenseness and some of the muscles. Uh, I'll take like, uh, magnesium calm powder or something like that mix that in a glass of water and oh you're getting crazy that. with it you're just you're I'm all, crazy dude. yeah man <laughs> yeah it's i mean when i the first two or three years i started when i was playing at ocs i i try to meditate um and i would actually sometimes go in the van and try to do like 30 minutes of meditation but eventually like you know we'd be parking like in front of the venue and like going in there to be by yourself it's just kind of weird you'd just be hearing people outside and every once in a while like someone would be like knock on the window and be like oh this just looks too weird and I mean, plus like you just see some guy like sitting upright but with his eyes closed in a van you're like this just looks weird what is he doing like so i stopped doing that but i don't know nerves are weird man no I, are, I know it's, there's they're strange like it's very odd you, you know you think like you get older, like you'll just uh, you'll get over things. You'll be like more comfortable in your own skin, but uh, I never have. It's, it's a real problem. It's um, right, but but you're but you're, you're finding ways. You're 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 out there. You're you're exploring. Yeah. That's important. Uh, like, yeah, totally. Yeah, you can. I'm, you got to get out there. I'm trying to. I'm trying to get through it. Yeah. It's yeah. A, it's a real. Yeah. I mean, good on you to try to find a solution, not just sit in anguish. Like, oh, this is a problem. Like, you're you're actively looking for a solution, which is, I mean, some people don't That's, even do yeah. that. So, I'm 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 big on attempting to be proactive with your problems. I'm uh, I try to find ways to get through these things. You're, you're a face uh, your fears kind of guy. I try to face my fears. Yeah. Or or hide in the basement. It's, uh, Zebulon is too much. That's uh, that's there's just too much fear in Zebulon. It's uh, back to the patio, dude. What? Well, I, dude, I, the I'm patio. gonna meet you there, dude. I'm gonna meet you there one day. We're gonna have a we're gonna chat with everybody, dude. We're, gonna, we're gonna well, we're gonna get in a quiet corner. That's what we got to do. We got to find a quiet corner in the Zebulon patio to, for me to meditate. We're gonna meditate, <laughs> transcendental <laughs> style. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's what I do. I do TM. Um, but I think this is probably 
David Lynch Foundation will be really angry for me for saying this. It doesn't totally help. I'm still a <laughs> anxious psycho. I was going to say David Lynch. He's a he's a huge guy. Coffee, cigarettes, transcendental meditation. He's a cigarette guy. Yeah. Oh yeah. He 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 smokes oh, a lot. No, he's a cigarette guy. Yeah. Wow. I know he does the Southern California weather reports. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, wow! I didn't know he's a cigarette guy. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm pretty sure he still is. He, he he was at one point. I'm pretty sure like that he does do that often though. And if okay. I'm wrong, I'm not sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I'm not sorry. You gotta get a. You don't have like an intern that does fact checking for your podcast. You gotta. No, no. You gotta get on that, dude. I know. Get on that. <laughs> I know. I know. I, I get more. I'm trying to get more professional in it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I think it's it's been going pretty good this is i mean i and I, i'm glad that this is the first one of the new year tim again i yeah, really appreciate yeah. you coming on i th- oh i'm happy to be here man i think uh i remember last year when we talked i think we both mentioned something about hoping that 2021 was a little bit better than 2020 and i, I feel like 2021 was better i mean things there were definitely there was definite positive progress i guess a positive. quarter was, of is, the is progress always positive better yeah a quarter of a percent, but I think it was more than a quarter percent. I'm going to give it like, I'm going to give it just a, at least 25% better. At Ooh, least 25% better. That, that, that's at least. All right. I mean, vaccinations happen and people are out and able to do things. Uh, shows were happening. Um, you know, I, I, you know, Trump lost the election. I think uh, politics got like a little less weird. I don't know. I, I don't know. It's, it's too much. I want, uh, I, I want Zachary Taylor to run again, dude. That was my favorite president. Who? Oh, Zachary. Taylor. Which one was Zachary Taylor? He was like, way, way, way back, way back in the day. I, I, I just like to, yeah, I just like to throw out random presidents, you know, ah, uh, Millard Fillmore. He was, he was pretty good. That's, that is, that isn't, that's a name you wouldn't hear much. You don't need a lot of Millards. Never, never once. But yeah, I like it, Millard. It's a good name. Yeah, it's a great name, man. It's a, uh, it's it's just got that like, old time American nobility. It sticks sort of out quality. with you. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. He would. He's got. He's got some Mayflower stock in him. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. How how good are you with names? Like, oh, I know that guy's name. Or are you like, I know the face. I don't know the name. It depends on this. I don't know. I, I think I remember names from back then a lot better than I do names with, from like the last like 10, 15 years, but I'm, I'm pretty good with faces for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. I, how about I, you, Ari? I, I, uh, no, I, I always feel so bad. I'm like, Hey, what's going on? You know, just super non nondescript. And then I do this and I've been doing this for, years i even if it's the first time meeting somebody this is like my kind of like safe out i go yeah yeah yeah. i remember i I remember meeting you remember that remember that trip that we took up to big bear or whatever i just like give a random and and then like they play into it like it's a joke but i'm like all right maybe i did meet this person maybe i didn't but it did backfire on me at a wedding one time i was i went out to my car it was a it was it was a friend's wedding and i went out to my car and i was just like i was i think i was grabbing a a flask or something like that and these two guys were at the car next to me and uh, i was like oh wait what do you what are you guys up to like oh we're just you know putting putting some alcohol in this coffee i was like all right hey very very nice guys and then uh and then, like i mentioned i was like oh yeah yeah we we met before like whatever whatever the fuck i said and he's like yeah yeah at uh at this coffee shop that i, that I, that I attended i was like oh Okay, maybe I did. I did meet this guy before. This this did backfire. So I did meet. Ended up meeting the guy before. Wow. Just didn't remember him, and I don't remember the guy's name either. But then I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He called my bluff. He called your bluff. Wow. He had my number. It, it, it'll all it'll all come back to you. You'll be, I don't know, mowing the lawn or something. They all seem like, oh, Clarence. Yes, Clarence. Yeah, it's always Clarence. Yeah, Clarence with the horrible breath. Yeah, I remember you. Yeah. Oh man, horrible, horrible breath. That's just that's a 
that's a rough one to to to, to go out there if you're in close proximity to somebody you're like, I don't yeah, or if you share a practice space with someone who has halitosis and you use the mic and it's just, oof. Oh, man. Would, uh, w- would you feel comfortable being up on stage as a front man to just sing without a bass, just up there singing? Oh, man, I don't know. I don't know, maybe. I feel like that wouldn't really, I feel like that wouldn't really fit my personality. I'm not really a front man type but you know, maybe someone wanted to give me money to try it that'd be that'd be an incentive i guess i don't know <laughs> i don't know but no one would want to see that i would i would i, I would, like would to see uh, it too. Uh, yes yeah do it we'll do it for you we'll do like a, a backyard show nope guys be on zebulon dude add zebulon uh, in the parking lot not even on the stage in the uh, parking lot yeah uh, you know, that's that is a real face your fears situation right there for me yeah sorry man i mean that's, it's new year new you so as they say, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm going to turn 40 in 2022. So it's going to be a, it's time to really face this, this goddamn thing. It's going to be get good. This, get this fixed. I feel it. I, I feel it's going to be good. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so, man. What do you, what do you see for the upcoming year? Uh, I see the, the world slowly fixing itself. Hopefully. Um, I mean, I think like it'll just go hopefully in the trajectory that 2021 went on. Um, I feel strangely optimistic that this new strain of the virus seems to be less severe, Mm -hmm. even though it seems very easy to transmit. I feel like because it's less severe when people get it, I'm hoping that subsequent strains of the virus just become less and less severe as time goes on. Um, I've, I'm imagining the world kind of, uh, just learning to adapt with this and moving on and hopefully, you know, hopefully there won't have to be cancellations of shows again. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm optimistic in the adaptability that I'm seeing in the world. I think like for a while, like I was just kind of like losing hope, but like, just like, dude, this is just, this is it. Um, but it seems like the adaptability is, uh, I don't know. We're, we're able to do it. We're able to adapt. I, I yeah. Yeah. The optimism. I like it. Too. Optimism. Yeah. You gotta be optimistic right now. Cause there's, you don't have hope. What do you have? What do you have? It's true. Is there anything that you're looking to accomplish? Like, I want to do this, this, and this in 2022. Uh, I want to make a new Flatworms record. Um, awesome. I'd love to hear it. So that's that, that's two for the Flatworms album. I think. Um, oh, Cs are working on some stuff that I can't I can't mention, but um, I'm that will come out. That will see the light of day this year. Hopefully, if pressing plants aren't super backed up. <laughs> um, you know. Uh, I don't know. That's good to hear. The the OC's uh, back at it. I, I haven't heard from them yeah. in a while. Yeah, we've been we've been on we're just you know laying low. I'm yeah, you've just been on hiatus. Yeah, <laughs> just not really not really good getting out there. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I don't know. I want to just pursue some personal things. Like, want to learn ceramics, and um, I've done a handful of woodworking projects with a buddy. I want to get better at that. Make some more furniture. Uh, oh, that's tight. That's cool. Yeah, I try to find some time to go to England and visit my girlfriend, or just bring her out here. Um, is it is it more yeah. of you going over there, or is she coming over here? It's more of me going over there, and it's it's a lot easier with touring to just like stay over there after a tour. Um, oh yeah, yeah, I bet. Plus, you know, she works um, full time, and like it's hard for her to just you know take like a couple of weeks off to just fly to America and hang out and but i'm always happy to go over there because i mean uh uh, she lives in manchester i love manchester um best record shopping ever out there too how do you get it back though that's that's the that's the issue oh i I find a way oh all right all right right. i bring a you know i i only buy enough that will fit in like a trader joe's tote bag like i won't buy more than that but there are some there are some shops out there that are truly truly special 
So, well, you know, if she's got a day where she's got to work, I'll just cruise around town and pursue what you want to pursue. Go to a ceramics class. Go make some wood. <laughs> yeah, dude, you got time. Yeah, yeah. Well, I won't pursue that stuff in Manchester, but I'll, uh, I will mainly just be record shopping and, uh, yeah, just strutting around town. I heard they're opening up a new amoeba over there, so that's gonna be really cool. <laughs> be really nice. uh, they don't, they don't, they don't need it. Honestly, they won't, they don't need it. They got, they got, they got everything figured out over there. Don't look good on got, them. Yeah, on them. literally, on them. literally mental in it, bruv. <laughs> yeah, they got it figured out. England's no. got a lot of things figured out. They're, uh, you know, okay. Look, let's, let's show, let's show America some things. England's, England's good. I'm a big fan. <laughs> Have you have you tried dri- driving there at all? Over well, that's, time being there? that's 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 the one thing they got to figure out. They got to they got to switch that over. That's uh, <laughs> uh, once once they get that figured out, you know, they're uh, will overtake us all. So they're off and running. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, they're off and running, dude. Who would have thought England being a superpower taking over stuff? I yeah, would have yeah. thought of it, dude. You, they're they, very optimistic for for a place that is uh just so gray and rainy they are uh, just a very optimistic people i i really had this this idea in my twisted brain that like weather was the key to good mental health for a long time i thought like you know if you're living in a place without a lot of sun like you're gonna you're gonna be totally depressed like in my mind like that was the one key ingredient to mental health was just uh, you know vitamin d from the sun the english are very positive happy people and they don't get a lot of sun like when they do, it's like the best day in the world. They're like, it's, they, they love it. Like, like watching the English in, in sunshine, it's like watching like a dog in the snow. It's like, they, it's like the best day ever. For them. It's so cool. Um, well, we, you know, we take that for granted in, in Southern California. Yeah. But, but, but I like when yeah. it's overcast though. It's like, oh man, you know, it's, it, it was kind of a bit cloudy. It was, it was rainy yesterday, you know? Yeah. I'm, I'm in Northern California. I'm in Northern California with my family right now. It's been raining basically every day since I've been here. Um, I've been trying to time it just right to go to the skate park here. When hopefully it's like not super wet and slick. Um, yeah. That's always good for, for skating is wet, <laughs> wetness of any kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just every, where everything is slick. It's, it's perfect. It's perfect. Really right. safe too. Optimal. Yeah, yeah, Tim. Yeah, thank you for helping. Oh, dude, me thank you, bring, man. Bring bring on the podcast in into the new year. Oh yeah, we did it last year. I hope we do it in twenty twenty three. Oh my god, this is gonna be our this is gonna be our tradition. It is. It is. We're we're we're, we're embracing it. And uh, Tim, I sincerely thank you again for coming on. You might have froze, but I'm still gonna say it. I'm keeping it in. Oh, we're back. We're back. We're back. <laughs> right when I was giving the compliments. Tim, seriously, man, thank you so much for coming back. Thank <laughs> Joe, you for thank coming you. back on the, the meeting, too. I really appreciate that. <laughs> oh, no worries. Um, but seriously, Tim, it really truly means a lot to me that you'd come back on. And, and, and I, I, can't, I can't think of a better guest to start the new year with. And I really Thanks, appreciate man. you. And I want Likewise. to end this with some – I know dude, I know you love me, Tim, and I love you, dude. It's, <laughs> it's, it's such a mutual thing. <laughs> But um, I like to wrap well, it up with some promo. Yeah, putting out new new music this yeah. year coming out. Hopefully, right? Hopefully, we got, yeah. We got DOCs. We got Flatworms. We got. I mean, yeah. and if anybody hasn't listened to Sick Alps, please go and listen to that. Great band, tremendous, tremendous sound. Um, but you can go to Castleface Records dot com mm-hmm. to go get some merch from DOCs and records. Yeah. Um, they one, don't... You, you can get a one flatworms record on there too. I think I think it's repressed, uh, and then a couple different labels for the flatworm stuff. Uh, Drag City is probably the easiest one to do mail order from. Mm-hmm. Um, and Bandcamp yeah. too, right? That's that's what. Oh yeah, yeah. Can... Bandcamp's Bandcamp's going on. Uh, I mean, flatworms I got... are gonna have a. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Flatworms are gonna have a live record that comes out this year um, by this label, Frontier, um, classic LA punk label. My Lisa Perfect. Francher. Um, yes, yeah, so that's coming out this year. Uh, unannounced OC stuff will be coming out, hopefully. 
and you uh, will, you will know about it because it, it'll it'll be out and you're gonna love it. Of course, like every other DOC's album, it's gonna be tremendous. I'm I'm saying it right now. Well, if you don't love it, that's you know, just be nice about it. Just that's all I ask. Just be real nice about it. Keep it to yourself. Yeah. Well, no, you don't have to, but it can be you know, just be nice about it. That's all. Just no, be real nice. I don't I don't want to hear any negative stuff this year. <laughs> it's only positive stuff. Um, only positive. All right. Tim, is there anything else we gotta we gotta promote? We're back. Let me tell you about this backyard Wi-Fi. It's uh tell me about that Wi-Fi. Tell me about that Wi-Fi, Tim. (laughs) Oh, this backyard Wi-Fi. Woo! Uh is there anything else though before you go again? Before you leave again, (laughs) is there anything else we gotta promote? Oh man. Uh no, I don't think so. Just uh whatever backyard Wi-Fi my sister has uh in Modesto, California don't get it it's it's a it's it's really not doing a good job out here it's but. it's spectrum is what it is tim it might thank be you so much now. yeah that's hey, that's, thank that's you, what man. it is I, I i appreciate you and i'm gonna talk Likewise, to you man. and i'm gonna stop recording this okay <laughs> thank you man here no worries <laughs>